that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, guys, welcome to the year end party. Um, I'm very surprised to see Outbound sitting down because you guys stand up for like everything, eh? <laughs> like, stand up for your first sale, stand up because it's one hour to lunch, stand up because someone switched on the aircon, stand up because maybe Jake Makala just died, but not too high, you know, it's baby Jake. Don't stand up too high. <laughs> Are you guys good though? Yeah? No, I really appreciate working here guys, you know, because I mean, it, especially if you're working at Outbound, hey, it's like awesome, it's like being in an aerobics class. Yeah? Because you're always like standing up, sitting down, you know? When I, when, I, when I get to my home, people are always asking me, why are you so fit? Are you working out? I'm like, no, but I work at PLP. <laughs> And they say, really? You don't handle any weights or anything? I say, no, I handle objections. <laughs> so that's how it is to work here at PLP, guys. And the other thing that I noticed, you know, when you work here, especially in Outbound again, you develop this mind, mindset of sales. You're always closing, you know? Like, you're always, you're always convincing someone to do something, you know? Like, there are these two, there's these two guys who work for my PA, these kind of guys, I don't know them personally, but I met them, like, some, sometime during the year. And those guys are always closing. Like, they're closing in the kitchen when they want to warm up their food. And okay, they're, like, closing the lady who serves food, you know? And I'm thinking, hey, you won't pay for this shit. Why are you closing it? It's her job to give it to you, you know? But that's how it is, guys. That's how it is. But now the thing that really cracks me up is the, the way people behave around Ron. Where's Ron? Where's Ron? Like, you know, Ron will say anything to you and you feel like apologizing. Have you noticed? <laughs> like, I saw this one guy out in the parking lot. Like, when Ron said hello to him and he's like, no, I'm tithing, Ron, I'm tithing. <laughs> And he made it even worse. He said some stupid stuff like, yeah, but it's a voicemail. Hey, this leads, you know. When is the vendor going to put better leads? No, but it's great working here, guys. It's been awesome. And I'm also very proud to be part of the call center industry as a whole, you know? Because now, like, there is no level of business that call center has not infiltrated. You know, there is no time of the day that you can't phone anyone for some customer support or customer service or technical support but I really feel that there are some industries that are left out in the cold like if you're a criminal and you are cracking a safe and it goes wrong who do you call? <laughs> but can you imagine how that call would be though? like it would be something like this, right? Uh, yes, today, welcome to Grand Theft Auto Solutions my name is Fat how can I help you? So please speak up, I cannot hear you over the police sirens. <laughs> uh, what, le what model safe are you cracking, sir? <laughs> oh, the X21. Okay, just let me look in my, my catalog. Oh yes, that's the Helen Zilla model. Um, apparently it's incorruptible. <laughs> However, we can try to help you, sir. Have you tried to hold a bank official hostage? <laughs> So that's how it would be for somebody working in a criminal call center, you know? But I'm also very proud to just have a job in general, you know, because this economy is tough. Like, you know, people are not making ends meet. Before I had a job, my ends were so far apart, they were phoning each other. You know? Like, it would be like, you know, end one would be like, end one, where are you, my man? Ah, uh, end two, are you there already? Yeah, I'm at the place, corner 31st and Month Street. Where are you, my man? Eish, my man, I'm still stuck on the 15, eh? <laughs> like, like, it would really suck if we didn't have jobs, guys. We really need to, because whenever I'm broke, when I go on a date, I just go to Mag and Bean and I order the giant chocolate chip cookie. You guys know the one I'm talking about? You know that huge ass chocolate cookie, right? The one that looks like the chocolate chips are paying rent to be on the cookie. You know the one I'm talking about? Like, if you look close enough, it looks like a small country mainly populated by black people. <laughs> right? That's the one that I'm talking about. Like, like, I've been that broke. You know? And I was almost late coming to work today. You know, I got into a fight with this guy in a wheelchair. 
So it was pretty hectic, you know, by the end of the fight we had to call both the ambulance and the road accident fund. And like, and this guy was strong guys, like he had a lot of upper body strength. A couple of times he rolled me over with the wheelchair, you know? Like if you look closely you can still see the skid marks. And like when the ambulance guys were looking at me and my injuries, he was on the phone with his insurance company because one of his ribs got bent, you know? Like he was really mad, he was really mad. But another thing about myself guys, I really like cars, eh? I'm what, I'm what you would call a petrol head. Any other petrol heads out there? Yeah? yeah? I love cars guys, I love cars so much, I love cars so much, my blood type is unleaded. Like I love cars so much, I almost asked one out the other day, like I saw this one beautiful 2013 Subaru WRX Impreza STI, right? Like it had 19 inch rims on it and a sports exhaust pack, that car was so hard I stopped and took out some cologne and shit, you know? You know, I started getting my swagger on, walking towards the car, like flashing my petrol card, saying, anywhere you want to go, baby. <laughs> like, I love cars. Thanks, my man. Thanks, my man. The guy with the same complexion as his glasses. Thank you. <laughs> you know it's all jokes, right? You know it's all jokes, right? <laughs> So anyway, I love cars so much that I almost got a job at this place called Goodfellas. You guys know Goodfellas? Yeah! You know Goodfellas, right? So I was thinking, you get paid to drive different cars every day, right? I'll probably get in the client's car and put a camera on the dashboard and act like I'm Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear, you know? I'll be like, ladies and gentlemen, the Toyota Corolla. With the body so aerodynamic, it looks like the head of Jacob Zuma. <laughs> I uh, just one more before I get out, guys. Just one more. An another thing about myself is I love watching educational television. Okay, this joke is a, is a request. I never repeat jokes, but this was a request, so I gotta do it. I love watching educational television, right? Things like National Geographic, Animal Planet, you know, where you learn like facts and, and all that stuff. So I recently learned that ants can lift up to 10 times their own body weight. Did you guys know that? Yeah, you knew that? I, I didn't. Like, at five times their own, ten times, sorry, their own body weight. So I like to think out the box, right? And I started wondering, what if human beings could do that? You know, ten times their own body weight. Can you imagine how strong fat people would be? <laughs> right? Like, fat people would be like superheroes, right? Like, a fat person would like take his own car to the super quick to get a spare tire with his hand and shit, right? You know, it would be a different world. Like, fat people across the world would be wiping their asses with men's health magazines, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like McDonald's become an illegal steroid. <laughs> you know, you can't cheat your way to getting fat, you know? People will be selling Happy Meals out of trench coats. People will be at home rolling chicken foldovers like it's a joint, you know? <laughs> It's just crazy, it's just crazy, you know? And I'm also a big fan of technology too. Like I love the way cell phones are doing their thing these days. There's touch screen, there's, there's internet, there's all that stuff. Like gone are the days where you would check your cell phone balance, your airtime balance, and it's, and it's just one line. It's the the top brand remaining, right? These days you've got a whole grocery list of things. It's airtime, it's Celsius to Celsius minutes, it's data, you know, it's, um, it's all that stuff. Like, and I don't know, we're lucky I didn't wear my you're gonna check your I'm already boiling, I'm already there, boiling now. Guy, you know? And he's like, over here in the airtime balance, we have a very sunny 74 and <laughs> And as we move over here now to the SMS minutes, we've got a very gloomy 2 SMS remaining. New. But as we move over to the data region, it looks like our user has just recharged, Bob. We have a very healthy 2 gigs of data remaining. <laughs> I'm Rob Van Dam, and that's your airtime report. <laughs> thanks guys, thanks guys, thanks guys. I really appreciate that. It's, it's very good. It is, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up now. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. You get your beer just now. Now, I'm just really appreciative of being a comic, a, a comic, oh, a comic in this country. Because there's so many others out there that have paved the way, you know, I'm very appreciative to that. People like uh, John Fismas, you know, Trevor Noah, uh, David Gao, you know, Julius Malema. You know, people that really inspire you to be funny, you know. 
Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ivi Entertainer. You've been an awesome audience. <laughs>